Excuse me. Excuse me. Can do you have some time to talk about our extended warranty? <laughs> oh, hi. I'm just uh, sitting here watching you. No. I'm just uh, about to tell you how I went from the ground up with my art and how you don't need a style. So, to start off this video, I thought I'd talk about the artwork that I did when I was a child. So, you may be wondering why I'm on the floor. <laughs> I thought it was a funny video idea. Anyway, I started on the ground because I was thinking how most people start with their art is at the very beginning on the ground and then they work their way up. So, with that, as you continue to grow as an artist, typically people worry about, oh, well, I don't have a style. Like, should I be worried that I don't have a style? Like, no. <laughs> style is your own way of doing things as well as, you know, a culmination of the experience that you have um, as a young artist or middle-aged artist or whatever, you know? You progressively learn as you go how to do things and as you go your style changes so if your style changes is that a bad thing no definitely not that just means you're a more real that just means you're a more well-rounded artist that can do more things than they used to so to start off i guess i'm just going to show you some of my stuff that i did when i was young and then you can see how my style has changed over the years So, this is my stuff. So, with this first one, obviously, naturally, a child did this, which is great. You know, I'm starting to learn about um, the joints and everything that a horse has, and not very much into people, as you can see. <laughs> but it was a very angry horse, apparently. Um, but that's that one. I started off with not a lot of uh, knowledge about um, how things usually work. Oh, hello, Billy. How you doing? <laughs> Billy approves. <laughs> but yeah, so this one I remember distinctly doing in the um, elementary school. Do you mind? <laughs> I did this in the elementary school and it was super, super fun to do. Lots of kids grow, uh, lots of kids gathered around me and it kind of watched him do things and they said oh that's great and as kids tend to do but obviously it was nowhere near what I'm doing today <laughs> get your butt over here okay Oops. so this one was let's see six oh this one was when I was eight years old it was my very first like animal outside of a horse apparently and i'm not a horse girl though don't at me but this was one of my very first cat ones and i obviously had no idea how that worked as you continue to see not a lot of um anatomy in practice but this i did um with a tutorial on the spirit cd uh the dvd so i was learning some things about horses so that's good. and then i continued to do my own thing with dragons and it's very boxy um kind of stylized if you ask me definitely stylized it has a style is it good style subjective but as a kid that's really really good in my opinion of course because it's my drawing but so this one excuse the stain <clears throat> This one was one of my very first realistic drawings. Realistic. <laughs> but it was actually really good for what I was doing at the time. And I started to kind of understand shape better and form. Started to put a little bit of shadow in there. Where? Um, and difference of contrast as far as what things were darker in a black and gray 
um, stuff like that. I'm trying to differentiate things from the other things in the picture so that you can kind of tell what it exa exactly it was. <laughs> now this was one of my very first ones um, that was a full on like color drawing. So as you can see, this was a werewolf with some other werewolves kind of howling at the moon essentially. <laughs> but I was really proud of this one at the time. Um, it was paying attention more to the musculature in anthro legs and arms and hands and it was actually fairly good for the time. <laughs> And then I started getting older and I started doing more character designs, as you can see. Um, more so kind of the Anthro family again. Um, this is definitely one of the ones that I really liked in the beginnings. Dragon character, whatever you want to call it. And uh, a black and red and gray, despite what it says there, white. <laughs> it's not white on the belly. But definitely um, exploring a little bit more of human anatomy while also doing my favorite subject matter, which was animals. Um, my style changed even more um, when I read some books about how to draw dragons, and so I try to put a screen grab of the, the cover of the book if I can find it. But this one, I did my own thing after doing the tutorial, kind of expanded on it a little bit, just as far as like the scales coming outside of it this way, and putting some like stripes on it. But as far as that went, I didn't really know what else to kind of pay attention to with dragons because they were kind of all over the place with me um, as far as how anatomy went. So I just kind of guessed as I went. So that's not really a good thing. Don't do that. <laughs> Always use reference, kids. After that, I started kind of um, exploring kind of landscapes, trying to come up with whatever I could, essentially, um, trying to expand upon different subject matter, exploring how to do those things instead of just sticking to the one thing of dragons and werewolves. Um, so with this one, I had copied a picture I found online and it was fairly accurate. When I was definitely understanding hand anatomy more, um, arm um, and tendons in the hands, as you can see this way, um, and definitely animal um, anatomy in the head of that wolf, um, but definitely not really understanding clothing all that great. It's, it's starting to get there, but definitely some anatomy issues with um, the arms and everything, but definitely getting there. Now this one uh, was kind of random. I started watching that OCC that used to be on TV. Um, I forget their names, but essentially watching them a lot, looking at the motorcycles, I thought they were so freaking cool. Um, but I had tried my hand at trying to draw a motorcycle for the first time. I, well, I think it's the first time. I don't know if I've done it because I couldn't find a lot of it. A lot of it was in storage and I'm not willing to go through that mess at all. <laughs> so there's that one and I tried to do some flames and I just did it willy-nilly and didn't really even look at any references at all because, you know, hashtag I'm a child. <laughs> yeah, or I was a child, I guess. Um, this one, um, this one is an obvious kind of rip from Golden Wolf, also known as um, Christy Grandjean. Um, she's kind of an anthro artist that I really looked up to um, because of the human and animal anatomy that was kind of being put together to just copy what she was doing to kind of understand a little bit more about the anatomy that was happening with an anthro character. And during, uh, I think this is about middle school now, yeah, age 13, um, this is one of my very first ballpoint pen um, drawings that I did, um, just purely because I wanted to do an angry snarly wolf and I was really into drawing angry snarly wolves. <laughs> Starting to get more into permanent mediums, different mediums, stuff like that, such as pen and everything. Speaking of different mediums, I actually took um, MS Paint at one point and created this guy, the comic book Venom coming through the box here. That was one of the other ones that I did as far as um, a superhero is concerned, or superhero, oh my god, uh, as far as a supervillain is concerned. I uh, started doing more detailed character sheets and everything like that. Another drawing of ballpoint pen and I, I think this was after the first Iron Man that came out. Another one I was trying to understand the um, fur and how that worked. Um, so you can't really see it, but I'm going to kind of go slowly as I talk. Um, this one was one of my favorite drawings um, from Golden Wolfen that she did. And so I printed it out on a small piece of paper and tried to replicate it. Onto some more ballpoint pen um, drawings. This one I was trying to draw a tree 
that looked really, really old and I had never drawn a tree realistically or tried to do it somewhat realistically before in the past. I tried my hand at just listening to music and letting my brain kind of go wild in that sense. Um, I didn't want to mess it up because I wanted it to look cool. <laughs> Another piece that I kind of copied from Golden Wolfen definitely didn't understand at all how to do clouds. This one I took a course by Aaron Blaze of Big Cats just to learn how to draw them better. Um, and I, I really learned a lot with that I, by studying the anatomy of a, of a lion. It's become more realistic, more um, grounded for lack of a better term. And later in life I decided to try my hand at tattoos um, because at that time I thought maybe I wanted to be a tattoo artist because I really wanted to do something with my art but I just didn't know what. Um, with this one, this was a tattoo idea for myself and I actually got this on my right arm. It changed a lot but I collaborated with her to figure out how I wanted that to look. I just gave her this rough idea and said hey run with it but I want this part to be somewhat similar. I wanted to improve my werewolves, so I really wanted to try to study wolf anatomy, although the skull's not that great, but it was just kind of off the top of my head and I just wanted to see where I was at first. Really proud of this one, specifically. And then on to high school, I also had an art class where we had some toys and stuff that we would be asked to draw, you know, from, from real life. And that's what I always recommend people to do draw from real life. And then always um, I got even more obsessed with werewolves trying to do a character for myself um, as far as if I were a werewolf, a werewolf um, what I would look like. I didn't really do so great with people still. On to this one. This is also high school. This was my big art project for high school. We wanted to do something as a final project and get graded for it and I just decided to do a giant collage of all of my favorite movies at the time. So you can kind of take some time, pause it, and see you can find some different movies in there um, and figure out which one's which. Um, you can comment down below which one you think is what. <laughs> or put a list in there of all the movies you can find. On to college. So with college, I kind of doodled. I just kind of did what I wanted as I did a lot of my stuff. I did a lot of dragons in my free time still. Um, I did, you know, a lot of shape studies as far as like real life goes. I don't know if you can see that, but it's there. Um, and then obviously another werewolf. This one's really light. I, don't, I highly doubt you guys can see it, but <laughs> it's there. Um, and then some more shape studies and everything. And then some more shapes. As the time went on in college, I learned more and more and more of real life and how to draw from real life. You know, shapes, shadows, line basically all the stuff that you'll need to create some art that you enjoy. As long as you learn the basics, it'll take you everywhere that you need to go. Um, so yeah, pretty much everything from there. That's pretty much all the drawings I could find out of storage. On to the montage. trying to say is that no matter where you start from and what your skill level is style doesn't really matter at any length of the journey because depending on your goal and your problem that you're trying to solve you'll need to change your style according to the guidelines that are given to you whether that's no guidelines or very little guidelines such as oh just do what you want as long as this is happening kind of like the tattoo that I referenced in the video um, or if someone gives you guidelines, you have to change up how you do your artwork so that it matches what that person wants, especially if you're taking commission. So with all that being said, go ahead and hit that like button. Go ahead and subscribe if you want to, no pressure. And hit that notification bell to know when there's new videos available for you to view. And with that, just remember to keep your head outside of the box.